Good morning. How are you doing, lovely people? So um, here we are. Let's see what have we got here. Um, practical yoga, as always. How to lift my arms. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, 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 Kishori. Um, uh, this is your question. How to lift my arms with washing to hang hang it out without okay without straining in my ribs and back okay lifting arms yeah great okay so uh this is your um uh, this is your weekly yoga solutions live hi alan glad you to make it you can make it mate nice to see you um and because uh, I hadn't had any uh, um, questions put online before I started, so I was just uh, doing my own practice and um, um, tuning into what it is that I share with my yoga. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm running this yoga week in my garden, and uh, I've got a few new bods here, and um, it, <clears throat> and, and wherever I go, it, it clearly the thing that I do is very different from from um, what is expected or what is what people are used to in the yoga. And I was I was tuning into what it is that is different. And um, I think I think the answer is uh, I, I see um, yoga as a tool to to um, unravel complications uh, I see it as a, a method if you like to um, become clear about uh, about the reality of things because that's what it was for me it was um, it was an eye opener it, it, it showed me how um, reality worked but through the body you know it's um, <clears throat> it's an idea it's an idea that um, I don't think is universally bought into, as in uh, the the body. I believe the body is is speaking all the time to all of us. Um, I think it is in in tune with um, who we are at an essential level. Hi, Julie. Nice to see you. Um, yes, I think I think it is in I think it is synced up with who we are uh, at an essential level. And um, and then we have our personalities, our, our our way of being in the world, the the thing we we have, the mantle we have um, adopted in order to survive, uh, to be a societal being, you know. And uh, these two things are not necessarily in sync. Now I'm not, I'm. Perhaps there, there is a lot more to it. Uh, this might be a little simplistic, but it, but it does, um, it, from my own experience, it seems like the complications that I have extricated myself from in, in my body over the years uh, through this application of um, listening, listening to the body's intelligence, um, <clears throat> what it's led to is a, is an unraveling of the programming, an unraveling of the of the impositions that um, I have placed on myself in an attempt to become part of the world as I saw it. You see, and um, so you know, a, a, a complicated knee uh, become un became uncomplicated, um, and in the process. Um, I got a little clearer about my direction, perhaps. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not going to do a Louise Hay. I don't have uh, prescribed relationships between parts of the body and, and um, states of mind. But um, I think, I feel, I experience a correlation. And um, <clears throat> the thing that I do with my yoga in, inevitably, inevitably involves personal development. Um, it has to, I think, for it to be yoga. So, uh, you know, when I'm working with the body, I'm working to apply principles. 
um, obvious things like um, nonviolence, uh, with the idea that uh, if I if I wish to understand nonviolence, then applying it to my body gives me a practical means of doing so, um, and the result is more to do with a shifting of the mind, as in um, if I presume that the body is a vehicle for testing the reality of my notions, then when I apply nonviolence, if I get it right, um, it will lead to a redressal of some physical issue. Um, and, you know, before I did the yoga, I would have considered nonviolence as something more akin to non action. But non action does nothing to redress. Um, stuck issues in the body. You have to act. You have to do something. But you have to work out how to do it in a non-violent way. And um, the surprising thing for me was just how much work that involved to be non-violent. So there's an example. Uh, and the, the result was uh, an eye shift. You know, my understanding of the, what things mean shifts because I practice yoga and it's through practical application and observation of outcome. So um, anyway, that's my thoughts for the morning. Uh, I've used up five minutes or so, so I shall um, get on with um, answering Kishori's question, practical yoga, how to lift my arms um, and to, how to lift weight. Um, okay. <sighs> So here's an example of um, mindset and experience um, marrying up. You, you see people um, in the gym lifting weights. Let's find a weight to lift so I can demonstrate. <clears throat> Here we go. <coughs> nice block of concrete. So this should illustrate the example. So you can see my muscles are working quite firmly to carry this weight. And um, a way of uh, thinking about um, um, the action of supporting this weight, if I think I have to lift this weight, that's what I do. And I use my muscles uh, pulling on joints, pulling on, on the structure to do so. And the rest of me has to brace to uh, counterbalance the force of the weight, okay? Um, and the same is true uh, if I'm just lifting an arm. If I, if I think of lifting an arm as lifting the weight of the arms, then I use the sort of pulley and lever system of the muscles to raise my arms. And the result is tension in the local area and a bracing in the rest of the body to fix against the counterbalance, which is kind of vague when I'm, I'm lifting just my, the weight of my arms because I'm used to it. I might have overstretched myself with this, but we'll, we'll see. So there's, there's other ways of um, thinking of supporting weight. And the, the, the way I would um, look at it, I, th I think I'm gonna make it a bit easier for myself. This is a bit hardcore. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that'll do, okay? So there is using muscular effort to lift weight, to carry weight, and then the body has to brace against the, um, the pull of that weight. Um, and then there's the idea of structural support, as in supporting weight from the ground up through the structure. To do that, you have to change your mind. <laughs> Um, if I pick up this weight, then that pull will pull me down and then I have to pull myself up. So I, I've created that situation. Um, if on the other hand, my intention is for this weight to be so supported from underneath, then that's what I do. I, I support this weight from my touch from underneath. And to do so, I need to support it from underneath, from the elbow. To support it from underneath, 
through the elbow, I need the shoulder to be supported from underneath. So we start to get some sort of structural alignment that allows the weight to be supported. Um, so if I can support the weight from underneath, then I have a breastbone, I have breathing, and I have a spine. I have a breathing space that when I release the breath, these things come together. And the result is there is a sort of structural balance, a structural support between the breastbone and the spine that supports the weight from underneath. So, um, yes, and then I have the breathing space in here. So instead of lifting and holding up against the weight, if I can find a breathing space in here that uh, arrives behind and below, uh, in front and either side, as I release the breath and the, that space empties, the result is to be supported through the spine from underneath. So the weight is being supported from my intention to be um, to give the weight through the structure. And I can keep going. There's, there's the uh, pelvic bones, there's the breathing space in the pelvic floor, there's the thigh bones, there's the touch of the feet, so that when I release the breath and stand on my feet, that effort supports all the way through this convoluted route to support this weight. And the result is there is a structural strength that supports the thing from underneath. Now, I'm not saying muscles are not involved. Of course I'm not. But it's a different intent. If I expect it to be heavy, then I will pull the weight up. Um, and that will pull me down. If I intend to, if I understand that support comes from the ground up uh, through my structure, then instead of doing that, I will go to the ground for support and use the engagement with the earth to support up through my structure as I find a way of supporting through to this weight. If the shoulders try and lift the weight, then I end up causing a problem. If I support through myself, there is no problem in the area. In fact, the weight itself helps the shoulder relax because the weight is being supported through the structure and it's given through the structure and the breath to the ground. So it does nothing but ground me. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, that would have only really meant anything if you'd tried it out. Um, otherwise you'd have just seen me waving a, waving a stone around in space. I don't know. Um, maybe we could do something else um, to explore that. It's just the idea of lifting weight. Um, uh, <laughs> those of you that do weights, um, isn't it? Here's a here's a, a little um, game for you. Um, if you take hold of a weight and just rest it at an angle like this, um, wherever wherever you are holding the weight up will get tired. And for me, it's starting to be here. So the thing that is not happening is I'm not being supported from underneath. So I'll have to work a bit harder in here to find a sense of support that travels from underneath, from through, from the breath um, to my hand. And if you, you know, if you, if you sort of make yourself stay there for any length of time, then you have to, you have to work it out. Uh, Alan's trying a bag of rice. Good man. <laughs> um, yes, if, uh, and Kishori, if you if you get hold of something that's not too um, tricky, you know, a, bu a bottle of water or something, so you can feel its weight. Um, here's, a, here's a perfect example. You know, you get hold of a bottle of water, and if you think you have to carry its weight with tension in the wrist, that's the experience you will have. Okay. If, on the other hand, you feel it as a weight that needs supported to be supported from underneath, then the hand and the wrist won't have to be tense because you'll be engaging with that touch from un underneath. And you know, the, the, strong, the stronger the weight, the more you have to get it ac accurate. So uh, for me, I could, I could quite easily hang out here most of the day and just induce some tension in my shoulder. But if I could, uh, if I had something uh, heavier, 
I would have to find a, a stronger central support for what I'm doing so that I could give the, the weight of this bottle to the ground underneath me through my structure. And uh, how, how do we tell whether, whether we got there or not? How do we tell whether we've got it or not? It's, uh, it's, it's learning how to tell the difference between um, effort and tension. Uh, those of you that have um, a problematic relationship with your body will e probably experience effort as tension, um, sensation as pain. And uh, these are interpreted, interpreted um, understandings of the sensations of the somatic experience. Um, <clears throat> the way you tell um, has to have some sort of objectivity about it. Um, <clears throat> tension is that which prevents movement and breath is a way it's a, a simplistic way of um, describing it it's not it's not um, ubiquitously true but it's uh, tension is that which prevents movement so for example right now I'm fixing this um, joint by carrying the weight and <clears throat> that effort stops the move the, the arm from moving Okay, so if I was to move the, the rock, I would have to cease this tension and then the rock could move. Um, effort is appropriate for the task. And the task is to support the rock. It's not to make my arm tense. And supporting a rock is, doesn't necessarily require me to lock this joint. It's, if, I, if I support it from underneath, there is no need for locking. Okay, so there's a difference. Um, how else do I tell? Okay, well, when you get close to the core of the body, shoulders, for example, there's, there's lung tissue under here. Um, if I'm carrying that weight with tension, then there will be no sensation of breathing, just the tension. If I can support using the structure, so if you, if you get your x-ray specs on and see where the bones are, so um, it's the collarbone that attaches to the body in terms of joint, joint um, support. So if I can find a way of supporting this weight through the structure, my efforts travel through the structure, then underneath that structure, the breath is not being interfered with. In fact, the breath, which is between the breastbone and the spine, <sighs> needs to form part of the structural support of the thing that I'm carrying. So the action of breathing itself needs to include, needs to join in. So um, it's certainly effort, it's certainly effort, but uh, the difference is the effort can breathe and the effort can move. The effort is involved purely in the task without interfering with um, other things like changing my mind, like breathing, like letting the breath go. All of those things have to integrate with the action for it to become um, functional, I guess functional in, 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 the, in the way I understand functionality, as in um, non-conflicted with the body, non-conflicted. And the result of working in this way is that um, uh, your joints don't wear out so quick. And even if the joints have worn out and there is problems, working in this way will remove those conflicts, will remove the consequence of pulling on joints and distorting them and holding them and fixing them. If you work through your joints, if you work from the ground up to support in space, um, through breathing, so that's your relationship to space, then you can find a way. You can find a way. So, Kishori, my answer to you is slow it right down and find a way of threading, threading to lift. If you try and lift, if, if you make it goal orientated, if it's task orientated, you'll do it the way you've always done it. And clearly that way restricts movement as you are now. So if you find a throughness in the way you lift your washing to hang on the line, then that throughness will ground you. The upward action will not be a lift. It will be a, an action that plugs you into the ground so that the lifting of the washing comes from being on the earth and breathing. Okay, so that's my time. Um, uh, so yes, I have to go now. Um, thank you, everyone. I enjoyed that. Uh, I've got people coming now. I've got one person here already. Uh, he's holding a, a 
uh, not a waiter above his head <laughs> trying out my stuff so um i shall sign off uh thank you uh, thank you for watching and if you if you gained any benefit please do share this all over facebook um i'm on a mission if you can help that'd be great and um if 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 one person if one person receives benefit then um you owe me a great favor so thank you and namaste this is mark j aquaviva of the aquaviva school of yoga signing off see you next week I, I'll, I'll try 10 a.m next week as well i think bye bye